instinct that just overpowers you. So you kind of catch it. Um, you're holding on to it, but you're definitely now on like one knee, um, kind of pushing it up. Welcome back to season two of the Dungeons and Dragons podcast. It has been a year since we last played, even though it hasn't been for you guys. So I'm very excited to say that. Now, it has been two years since we last saw our heroes. Midnight was killed and betrayed by Scarlet and Clarion, as you guys know. Shadow later died of his injuries after the healing spells were not successful. So, we follow Bartholomew, Scarlet, and Clarion on their adventures two years later. Bartholomew and Scarlet have been rebuilding the town of Fandwin, and because of that, they have gained favor in the town, becoming leaders of sorts. Also, Bartholomew has been training Scarlet and got her over her fear of fire. And Clarion went on his own adventure to gain new skills. What will happen next? Let's get into this. Find out. In the city of Neverwinter, a dwarf named Gundren Rockseeker asked you to bring a wagon load of provisions to the rough and tumble settlement of Fandolin, a couple of days' travel southeast of the city. Gundren was clearly excited and more than a little secretive about his reasons for the trip, saying only that he and his brothers had found something big, and that he'd pay you ten gold pieces each for escorting his supplies safely to Barthen's provisions. He then set out ahead of you on horse, along with a warrior escort named Sildar Hallwinter, claiming he needed to arrive early to take care of business. You spent the last few days following the high road south from Neverwinter, and you've just recently veered east along the Tribor Trail. You've encountered no trouble so far, but this territory can be dangerous. Bandits and outlaws have been known to lurk along the trail. As you guys are oh, traveling along the Tribor Trail, you've been traveling for about half a day. As you come around a bend, you spot two dead horses, crawled about 50 feet ahead of you, blocking the path. Each have several black feathered arrows sticking out of it. The woods press pretty close to the trail here, with a steep embankment on and dense thickets on either side. We gotta investigate the horses. Have we been told that the area is troubled with bandits? You can recall as you guys were loading up the wagon that Stildar was talking to him to be careful on your trip because there have been goblin attacks in the area, but he told you he's not worried that you guys wouldn't be able to handle anything else thrown your way. As Scar's gonna go do that, can I say, everyone watch out, there could be some spooky shit going on. What did he say? He said there's some spooky stuff going on. What kind of- oh. Oh, shit. Be on guard. It could <laughs> be a trap. Okay. Shit. What? I'm gonna fly that down there. Can I investigate the horses now? Scarlet, as you walk over and as Bartholomew is flying, you notice something in the bushes. Can I take out my, um, crossbow? Show yourself. As you were pulling out your crossbow and Bartholomew says that, four goblins jump out of the bush to attack you. Two goblins have the jump on you. So this oh, one, this he's gonna dick. run up to you and he is going to attempt to scimitar attack against you. Oh, that's eight to hit. Not even close. He does not even hit. Another one is gonna, uh, Bartholomew, are you still in the air or on the ground? On the ground. This one's gonna run up to you. He is cool. gonna hit you with a scimitar attack. 10 probably doesn't hit you, does it? Oh, fuck no. All right, so he's gonna try to go in with a scimitar and he goes in and completely misses. I'm gonna take out my crossbow, the one right beside me. That did a lot of damage to him. He is not looking good. I take out my short sword since he's closer to me now. Well, then I'm gonna do my two weapon fighting then with my short swords. He is dead. How do you wanna do that? I'm just gonna shoot the arrow because he's close to me and then it's gonna hit him in the shoulder and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna slash his head off with the sword. I target that. Just let the body drop as the blood pools on the ground. Can I move closer to the ones behind the horses? I'm gonna uh, hit this motherfucker with the, uh, the Night Fury. Uh, with the axe and gotta do that bonus action rage. How do you wanna do this? I will like turn to the side, if he misses, grab it, I'm gonna bend it in half, break it. And I'm gonna pull my axe out, I'm gonna slam it into his chest, and then just all Thor-like, I'm gonna fire lightning out of it. And just incinerate his body. God, it feels good to be God. Let's go over to that guy over there. Uh, take off the light. How do you want to do this? I'm going to fly over to him. I'm going to grab him. I'm going to throw him into the air. And then I'm going to fly up after him. I'm going to hit him with the axe at the uppercut. And then throw his body towards the ground. And as he's falling, hit him with the lightning. Jeez, why, why don't you just ruin his whole career while you're at it? <laughs> he doesn't have one after me. Well, I can't attack him. I got the one beside me. Yeah... Kind of do. Kind of do? But I kind of just want to fly over. I kind of just want to go over there anyway, just um, in case. 
while all this is going on, I guess I'm going to be watching the cart and just keeping an eye on the surrounding woods. You don't see anybody around you. Uh, you, you just see that the fight is directly in front of you. After determining that, I'm going to magic missile. How do you want to do this? I snap my fingers and three balls of magic energy appear around me orbiting and then they start flying. They go around the tree from behind and hit the goblin in the back of the head, in the back, and through the back of the mouth, piercing through it, and the magic missiles return to me before just dissipating. All of the uh, goblins are dead. I want to get my crossbow bolt from the one. I'm going to go back to the wagon. I'm going to loot the bodies. So you find that two of them are equipped with bows and arrows. So I'm going to say each one of them has a dozen arrows that you can loot from them. The two that were closer to the wagon, they had, they have scimitars on them. They have some daggers. I would say you'd find five gold pieces on each uh, goblin. Thank you, Sky. You guys are on the road again to Barthen's Provisions. All right, you guys are now in the town of Phandalin. You come into town and you see that several people greet you along the way. They are pretty happy to see you. They, you haven't been to town in some time, but they are happy that you are here. Everyone now feels a relief of safety. You guys make it over to Barthens Provisions and you unload the supplies. And to your knowledge, as you see, as you are unloading the supplies with Barthen, you don't see Gundren there to greet you. Damn, hey, where's our homie? I have no idea. Maybe he's in the mines again? Tough. We can go look for him later. We have a job to do. Let's go ask Harbor Western. We have to drop all this shit off first. As you start unloading it, Barthen comes out to greet you and he, and he goes, Hello! Welcome back! You brought the supplies! Yep. Yes, sir. All right, well, here, let me get you the gold that Gundren promised you. And you all get 50 gold pieces. Barthen looks around you and he kind of goes, Where's Gundren? We have no idea. Uh, I, I ain't seen him. What do you mean you haven't seen him? Is Wasn't he supposed to come back with you? Come back with us? What are you talking about? Excuse me? Yes, he went to never went to, to find you guys and get the supplies, right? Why is he, is he not with you? He did what? He didn't come with us. Nah, nah. dog. Our impression is, he, is that he would be here to meet with us? Hmm. Strange. Something ain't right. No. And Bartholomew yeah. does not like that. Is that what he said, guys? That he'd be here to he'd meet us here? Uh, yeah, I mean, we assume he's here. Hmm, maybe he might just be late. Maybe. Did anything happen to you on the way here? I mean, we got attacked by goblins. Hmm. We killed them Where the horse is at? I'm sorry? Does he have horses? Where's his horses? I, I don't know. He was with you. Yeah. He wasn't with us. He was with you. Yeah, he never came. I can assure you he was not. Okay, okay, okay. Let's... Di well, okay, he left. Do you know if he took any horses with him? Him and, uh, and, uh, Sildar, they left for Neverwinter to get the supplies. Who is Sildar? We gotta go back. Sildar is an adventurer around these parts. Oh, fuck. Well, he's a shitty adventurer because we came across two dead horses. Oh. Yeah, we gotta go back. We're going back. Tell Harvard Wester I'll, I'll see him later. We gotta go. All, all right. Okay. It's been a couple hours. Follow the trail and you find you guys are now back at this site. Can we investigate the site more thoroughly to see which direction they went? As you investigate the bushes where some of the goblins initially were, you find a secret trail. You can um, recognize from the tracks that about a dozen goblins have come and gone along the trail, as well as signs of two human-sized bodies being hauled away from the ambush site. I'm going to take out my short swords and follow the trail. Where the fuck is she going? There's a trail over here, and there, there's evidence that people have been through here. It looks like bodies oh. have been dragged. Well, that would have been nice to know. Let's go. You guys are going on. Someone more. better keep a oh. leash on here. Okay. I don't need a leash. Remember what happened last time you went up on the road? Yeah. I'm over that. About ten minutes into your hike, Scarlet, you actually notice a thin wire along the ground. So I stop, and mm. I look if there's a way to... Untrip it without tripping. Why'd you stop? There's a trip wire. Well, follow the wire. Where does it go? It's a trip wire, genius. Yeah, well, what is it? You know, like, where does it go? Is it. Can I investigate? What is that? it connected to? You follow the wire and you see that it goes up a tree. Climb up the tree. Okay, you go over, you climb the tree, you look around, and you see that on the other side of the tree, towards the top, is a large rock tied to the string. So I'm gonna come back down. And just, like, step around the tripwire, like, step over it so it doesn't trip. And I'm going to be careful to look for more along the way. 
I'm just inquisitive. I'm like, hmm. What are you inquisitive about? I'm just wondering what's going on. I guess I'm going to look at the ground for tracks. You notice the same, the same tracks. A scarlet found. You can tell that there's a dozen goblins. Two human body shapes were dragged through, and uh, you can see Scarlet's new fresh tracks. And I'm none like, of Bartholomew's so tracks because he's in the air. I'm like, someone was here very recently. No, Doc, we're in nice investigation. Can I just look at him with disappointment? I have more wisdom than intelligence. Shut the fuck up. Clearly. I keep moving. So you guys continue onward, and in about another ten minutes down the trail, uh, you notice a perfect circle of leaves just all along the trail in front of you. How dumb do they think we are? They're goblins, darling. They don't really have much capability of thinking of our intelligence. Can I, like, pick up a rock and, like, throw it at the trap? You pick up a rock and you throw it at the trap. All the leaves collapse into a six-foot wide pit. It's about ten feet deep. I'm gonna go around it and continue on. As you go along the trail, you notice a river that leads into the mouth of a cave. Hmm. Well, I'm going in. I don't know about you guys. Uh, same. Oh, yeah, sure. A shallow stream flows out of the cave mouth, which is screened by dense briar thickets. A narrow, dry path leads into the cave on the right-hand side of the stream. On the east side of the stream, flowing from the cave mouth, a small area in the briar thickets has been hollowed out to form a lookout post, or blind. Wooden planks flatten out the briars and provide room for guards to lie hidden and watch the area, including a pair of goblins lurking there right now! Oh, great. Pussies. You yell that, and now the goblins have been alerted to your presence. I guess I'm just oh, gonna okay. cast. I'll do magic missile at second level, meaning I get a second bolt. And if you don't first kill one both is... of them with just one shot, I'm gonna be disappointed. How do you want to do this? I walk up towards the river. I'm like, hello, waving my arms, smi smiling at them. And then on my other hand, I just snap, and four bolts of energy appear around me and just dart at them. And within like literally less than a second, they zoom through the air whizzing each go through their faces and out the other end Damn. Oh, as their bodies just hit the floor i just turn around look to, the, to those two i'm like can we go now yep we can i'm gonna continue well yeah um sure Thank you don't you, you don't think you don't think that you know, there's more do you probably well we took them out before any alarms were raised i mean i'm not gonna argue but i still think you're stupid <laughs> and i still think you're an asshole I'm gonna go look in the cave. You get over to the entrance of the cave. You see there's a little narrow path on the other side. You notice that the stream is actually only two feet thick, so it's gonna be treated as rough terrain. Can I'm gonna fly over it. I'm gonna walk through it. Yeah, you can only go up like 20 feet. You can see past this way to your right. Just inside the cave mouth, a few uneven stone steps lead up to a small dank chamber on the east side of the passage. And the cave narrows to a steep fissure at the far end and is filled with the stench of animals. Savage snarls and the sounds of rattling chains greet your ears, where three wolves are chained up just inside the opening. Each wolf's chain leads to an iron rod driven into the base of a stalagmite. Can we investigate the animals? See if we can turn them on our side? Give them one of my rations. You gave them a random hamburger that you just somehow had on your person. The animals take it and they just eat it up. And then are now calm and they're not snarling at you anymore. Can I try to pet one? It stops and looks at you and just it won't take your eyes off of you. The other two are kind of are also looking at you to see what you're going to do. And as you put your hand out to pet it, it just keeps staring at you. <laughs> no. Go ahead and let it happen. Let's see what devolves or evolves from this situation. I kinda of hope they attack Who knows? Maybe we get some pets out of this. I wanna try I don't need to pet the fucking horse. I want to try to remove the chain. You can tell that how the goblins would do it is they would have to yank the chain out of the stalagmite to let the wolves loose. That would let all three of them loose at once. Where did she get the cheeseburger? I think she got it from the previous goblin or something. The tavern? Where did the goblin oh. have cheeseburger? I got how it from the tavern. How, uh, when, did you, when did that happen? Speaking <laughs> of which. Yeah, I got it from the tavern. Well, typical woman. Shut up. I want to try to see if there's any possible way I can tame them. If not, fuck it. I mean, you've given him food, you've given him pets, he hasn't, like, outright attacked you. I want to take one of my short swords and, like, help pull it out. Oh, here we go. You take the chain out, but the, the wolves don't do anything. They're kind of just looking at you. Would you want to come with us? The wolf you pet kind of tilted its head and is just looking at you. You can come with us if you want, or you can stay here. Can I just, can I just behind her, just uh, lean over and say, "Who's a good boy?" 
I could hold out like a piece of meat, I'm like, who's a good boy? Why did everybody get the cheeseburger? <laughs> Are you hungry, Bartholomew? No, I just don't know where you guys got uh, the The wolf kind of just, he looks at you and kind of boops you. Oh, my heart! <laughs> I put it on the ground in front of it. Would you want to come with us? You can be free of these chains and this rock. Maybe they like that rock. The wolf just tilts its head at you. I'm just gonna pet it again. It like pushes its head into your hand to accept the pets. The other dogs are now, uh, one of them is kind of like, it's gonna nuzzle up to uh, to Clarion a little bit. Oh, fuck. And then this one is also now wanting pets. So I'll pet I, I'm dying. <laughs> Clarion, get a grip, would you? I have a horse. He's so cute. I'm gonna walk out and like motion that the wolf can follow or not. You've got the wolves now kind of following you. I've got a bad feeling about this. I uh, continue down the path. All in the meantime, can I be giving can I be giving them pet pet? Uh, you follow the stream and you see that there is there's a pathway to your left. And then that there's a slow incline going upward, but above you is a bridge that you don't see a direct way onto as of yet. The main passage from the cave mouth climbs steeply upward, the stream plunging and splashing down its west side. In the shadows, the side passage leads west across the other side of the stream. In the shadows of the ceiling to the north, you can just make out the dim shape of a rickety bridge of wood and rope crossing over the passage ahead of you. Another passage intersects this one 20 feet above the floor. You can take the, you can try taking the walls with you, and me and Bartholomew can go to the path to the left. I think it's best if we stay together. Yeah, These are goblins. Oh, very funny. What's he saying? Well, I'm gonna go to the left. I'm gonna stick with Clarion. I'll go towards the bridge. Clarion, that brings you over to a fork in the road. And then you see a light. This light, you see this area. You see a large group of goblins over here. A large cave is divided in half by a 10 foot high escarpment. A steep natural staircase leads from the lower portion of the upper ledge. The air is hazy with the smoke of cooking, fire, and pungent from the smell of poorly cured hides and unwashed goblins. Ew. They currently don't see you guys as of yet. I look behind to the group and lift up my hand and I ignite a small ball of flame in my hand. I'm like, should I just do it? If you want to. I mean, it's one go, but sure, let's do it. I'm pretty sure it will hit all of them. Hopefully they're not fireproof. Oh no, they're not. How do you want to do this? As we're kneeling there, I'm like, okay. And I hold that my hand out with the ball of flame and it just slowly flies over towards the goblin that I'm using it on. And it, it slowly floats to him like a little wisp. And I guess he gets curious about it. He's like, ooh, what's that? Uh, and as he goes to touch it, it immediately explodes into a giant roaring fireball with the wall of the fire ending up in front of my face. So I'm at the end, I'm at the edge of the edge of its range. And within the inferno, you just hear you just hear um, a quick second of a scream, and then the fire quickly fades, and it's just ash. There's not even bodies left. As you do that, the wolves panic. And they start crying, and they turn around, and they just bolt out, and they run out of the pathway, back into the cave. Bartholomew sees them run towards the mouth of the cave and outside, and now go back out in the wilderness. Oh, I wonder what Clarion did. I look back. I'm like, eh, at least they're free in the wild again. Yeah, no kidding. It looks like there's I... a stairway over there. Do you see it? I see it. I'll go investigate. You? Uh, do you want to go to the other path and scout ahead? Sure. Okay. As you go up the stairs, you notice an older gentleman in the corner, bloodied and beaten. He's asleep. You don't wake him up. Guess I'll just walk up to him and investigate him? You see that, yes, he is tied up. Well, I guess I'm kneeling down in front of them, and I'm like, Oi, you alive? He immediately, like, kind of jumps. Who are you? Stay back! Wow, very courteous for someone who just killed all your captors. Who are you? Name's Clarion. Wonderful to meet you. I hold out my hand and I just look at it, look at his tied up body. I'm like, sorry. He looks at your hand and he looks back up at you. Then I'm just smiling. Look, he looks at his hands tied behind his back. I don't know what you're expecting to do here. Awkward. I slowly pull my hand back. I'm like, I'm new to this saving thing. Sorry. So what's your name? <laughs> Who are you? My name's Clarion. Pleasure to meet you. Right. I just butchered and massacred all the goblins that were cap that were holding holding you captive. So you're not here. Okay. So then why are you here? Uh, originally we're here investigating the disappearance of someone else. Who are you? Okay, I don't know how many times I have to say this. My name is Clarion. Okay. And I'm I'm here with some. Let me try that again. Who are you looking for? We're looking for a dwarf. His name's Gundrum. Are you with the black spider? You mean Lolf. 
the psychotic, manipulative goddess of spiders and drow. No, not the goddess of spiders, the black spider. Who the fuck is the black spider? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a no. Doesn't answer my question though. What dwarf are you seeking? A dwarf? I'm just sitting crisscross applesauce now in front of him. I still haven't untied him. I'm looking for the dwarf Gundren. You're looking for Gundren? Yes. I don't know where he is. I just know he was taken from here. Get me out of these bindings. You can at least ask nicely. I've been beaten by goblins. And I killed those goblins. Thank you. Can you untie me, please? There we go. That wasn't so hard. I get up and I walk behind him and I tie him. Do you need medical aid? Some of us have a medical experience. I, what kind of medical experience? I would like some help, yes. But first, we need to get out of here. Am I able to see if he has weapons on him? He doesn't have any weapons on him. After I untie him, I start heading towards the stairs. And I'm like, this way. As I'm leaving, I guess I'm going to check the piles of ash that were the tents and bodies to see yeah. if there was any, to notice to see if there was anything that yeah. could help. And I tell him to grab a weapon. He's going to go around. He's going to pick up a uh, charred short sword uh, by one of the goblins. Garlic, we're going to cut to you. I'm going to continue down the hallway. And you find yourself at the bridge. At the same time, Bartholomew is, is at the bridge. Can I investigate to make sure the bridge is safe to cross? As you go up to investigate the bridge, you see a goblin on the bridge. Can Bartholomew, I... as you are approaching the bridge, are you being stealthy at all? Nah. He sees you, and he's going to dart off. He turns to um, behind him and yells out, Flood! Flood! Oh, no. That doesn't and sound good. Soon you hear something crack as the water flows down the stream, flooding the entire passageway underneath the bridge. You just simply fly over it, and it doesn't affect you. The goblin turns back, looks at you in terror, turns back. That did not work! You hear <laughs> down the passageway. What do you mean it didn't work? It didn't work! Uh, fly up to the bridge right in front of it. How do you want to do this? I'm going to fly up there and I'm going to stand in front of it and just kind of tower over it. So I'm going to grab my axe from behind my back and I'm going to use the flat side of it. And I'm going to slam it on top of his head. And I'm going to keep slamming him until his body breaks the bridge and falls with just splinters and broken bones. Okay. And then I'm going to fly forward. Put my torch in one hand and I'm walking forward. You see that there's an opening ahead of you. I'm walking towards it. You walk towards it. Scarlet, uh, you are now at the top of this broken bridge. So you're 10 feet above the water. Can I jump the bridge? I just back up as far as the thing would let me. I take a running start and I push off and jump, long jump style, landing on my feet. With And then I All roll right. back on my feet. All right, you are now with Bartholomew. Thanks for blowing the bridge. You're welcome. Claren, you are now with the adventurer who I still don't believe gave you his name. While we're looting the area, I'm going to be like, so what is your name, by the way? My name is Sildar. Sildar? Is that with an S or a C? With an S. Where are you from, Sildar? I am currently from the city of Waterdeep. I am one of the agents of the Lord's Alliance, a group of allied political powers concerned with mutual security and prosperity. Interesting. We gotta join my other friends so we can get so we can find our other friend and get get us all out of here safely. Ah, uh, yes, we need to find. Also, also, did you hear a rush of water? I heard some kind of commotion. I, that may, that may be your friends. We should we should check up on them. Probably. Onward. Uh, my friend last went this way. As you guys go over here, you find the bridge is broken that you initially saw. You see torchlight and silhouettes of two people at the end of the cave. Bartholomew. Ooh. Are you able to jump that? I'm too weak for that at the books. Sorry, pal. <sighs> well, I can't teleport us across. I can only teleport myself. Mm. Lovely. Maybe if we go back around, it looks like it slopes upward if we follow the stream. Good idea. Let's do that. So you guys are now on your way. Bartholomew and Scarlet. This cavern is half filled with two large pools of water. A narrow waterfall high in the eastern fall feeds the pool, which drains out the western end of the chamber to form the stream that flows out of the cave mouth below. Low field stone walls serve as dams holding the water in. A wide exit stands to the south, while two smaller passages lead west. The sound of the waterfall echoes through the caverns, making it difficult to hear. You find three goblins who are ready to fight you. Cool. Let's fucking go. Let's rush him. How do you want to do this? Well, since I'm rushing him, I'm going to do my little wing flap thing where I jump super far and I'm going to wing flap. I'm going to take my axe and I'm going to just shove it straight into his chest. I'm going to grab the small little head, squeeze it till his eyes pop out. Rush the second guy. How do you want to do this? With the other goblin's body still in the axe, I'm going to point it towards 
the next goblin and I'm gonna shoot the lightning bolt and the body towards him and it's all just gonna hit him and they're both gonna incinerate. He is dead. I just have a goblin scream. This goblin is said, fuck this! And he is now <laughs> running towards the stairs. I'm just gonna continue in the cave. You now can see, boom, right over here. You see a small fire happening over here. Can I use my action surge to have another movement speed? As you run in, you see the uh, the goblin you're chasing as well as several other ones, along with the large bear goblin hybrid. You don't really know what that is. He is going to ambushing you. He's going to try to hit you with a morning star. He rolled a 24 to hit. Is it magic? Ah, no, he doesn't have that. So he's going to try to take a swing at you. He's going to swing at me and I'm just going to grab his, his weapon. You try to catch it, but his strength just overpowers you. So you kind of catch it. Um, you're holding on to it, but you're definitely now on like one knee, um, kind of pushing it up above you. Cut over to Clarion and still dark. Since I see he's injured, I'm gonna help him across the water. I'm like, I'm gonna get in the water and hold it, hold out my hand to see if he needs help. And he takes your hand and you know you're helping him through the water. This way, and we're gonna go up the up the uh, cave walls. I'm gonna go around. As you guys go up the ca uh, cave walls and follow the ramp, you see. Bartholomew just laser a fucking goblin. So he's now complete, absolute just ash. You see Scarlet kind of bolts uh, up some stairs into another room. Hey, Bartholomew, look who I found. It's not Gundren, but it's, uh, what'd you say your name was? Sildar. It's Sildar. He's from Waterdeep with apparently some, like, guild alliance or something. Yeah. Where are, where's that goblin scum? I don't know. Uh, Looks like we killed most of them so far. Incinerated. Thanks for the help. He was captured, to be fair. Hmm. We need um, to find Gundren. If we can capture one of them, they might be able to tell us where he is. Where's Scarlet? Up there. Oh, let's go. You stay with Bartholomew. Uh, All right. Don't put him with me. Okay, stay with me, but behind me. All right. And we'll go this way. Let's. I'm going to go join Scarlet. As so. the ashes slowly drop the axe. So you guys follow Scarlet. You see that Scarlet is currently engaged with a very large creature. She's holding up his morning star above her as if she caught it. Nice catch. Thanks, you could help out. Oh, I could. Hey, Sildar, how capable are you right now? I will fight as hard as I can. Lovely, I'll clear the way. I look at the two goblins in front of me and I cast, would I be able to shoot a fireball at the end of the wall? Tell me how you're gonna do this for the goblin and the wolf. For those two, they barely see this coming. I flick it and it zooms past uh, Mia's face in between those two of them. It hits behind the wolf and explodes. It would send the wolf and goblin flying, but they turn to ash midair. It just incinerates them. And I look back to Sildar, I'm like, that should probably loosen things up for ya. Aye, that'll do. Nice shot, Clarion. <laughs> I got you, girl. Thank you, thank you. So then the big guy in front of Scarlet, he's lets out a roar and pain and it's just even more angry. He's gonna go for another swing at Mia, which doesn't matter because he doesn't have a silver weapon. He's gonna go in for another swing and he's just so blinded from the pain that he just misses and just gets it stuck into the ground next to you. I just um, laugh. And then Bartholomew, it is your turn. Hey, I'm coming in. You have several people blocking your way, but granted the ceilings are 20 feet tall. I'm gonna dive bomb over him, so let's hit the big guy. He just flies yeah. over me. Ka -ka! We've matured past that. Clearly. Sorry. Some of us are into bigger, better things like preparing a city instead of running off like a little pussy. No kidding. We'll get into it later, bitch. Anyway, I'm ready to hit this motherfucker. How do you want to do this? He's right next to a wall, so I want to fly in, do this little like twist in the air, land on my feet, take my hand. I want to punch him in the face so he backs up towards the wall. I'm going to take my axe, I'm going to twirl it, and I'm going to slam it into his forehead against the wall and do my little lightning zap to, you know, incinerate the body into just bones. He is now not moving anymore. <laughs> I'm going to turn and hit the other guy. Uh, how do you want to do this? So I just ripped the sword out of the big guy's head, and I'm going to do a pivot 180, slice the dude's head off. The head's going to roll towards the new guy, and the body's just going to drop after being electrocuted. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and use my bonus action frenzy. <laughs> we're gonna go for the third guy. I'm gonna use the sword. How do you wanna do this? So I'm gonna flip my axe over to the sword side. I'm gonna hold it towards the base of the axe. Or, you know, like right, that little handle can be a little bit longer. I'm gonna look at him. I'm gonna trip him to make him fall. He's gonna flip over and try to start crawling away like a little bitch. And I'm gonna stab him in the foot, drag it back 
towards me, step on his head, crush him. You guys have cleared the cave. So far, is in. That's what. That was amazing. Utter violence. I love it. He looks around the room and he and he goes, "I don't see Gundren." I doubt we've explored this whole cave. Maybe they didn't oh, bring Oh shit. Here. Well, in the tracks we followed, must have been when they captured you. There were two bodies. Where was the second? Was anyone with you? Dungeon was. We were on our way back to Fandolin. That hmm. reminds me, what were you guys doing in the first place? Well, you see, Gundren and his brothers, Thawd and Anundra, recently located at the entrance to the long-lost Wave Echo Cave. And it's very important in, in, in this area. It's the site of the mines of Fandelver's Pack. Clog, the bugbear who you just slain, was sent instructions by someone called the Black Spider to capture, to use his band of goblins to capture the, dwar to capture my friend and bring him mm -hmm. and the map that he had to him. I think Plog sent the map and Gundren to the chief of Kragmaws at a place called Kragmaw Castle. I don't know where that might be, but someone at Fandolin might know. Well, we were to told Fandolin. that you guys left to go find us. They did, and then they that, and they probably got captured. So they were probably just going to eat Sildar. Do goblins eat humans? They eat anything. Goblins, they might. I've never let one live long enough to see it. I'm going to whip out my twig blight pet, just let him eat some of the corpses of the goblins. Wh what is that? It's my pet twig blight. I call him Groot. The twig blight is eating when he looks at I am Groot. I left my twig at my house. And he goes, all right then. Yeah, he eats the flesh of dead things. Let's go back to Phantom Knife. Could really use some rest and drink. Uh, what do we do about what's his face? I forgot his name. We'll ask around about him and see if anybody knows anything. Yeah, we're looking for some kind of castle keep thing. In the meantime, while he's eating, can I like check to see if there's any valuables that gun that Gundren left here? Or that the goblins have? Uh, sacks and crates of looted provisions are piled up in the south end of the large cave to the west. Now, with that said, they're not burned. Only some of them are charred. There's a lot of stuff. You're going to need a wagon to transport it. We could you sell could, it. You see that uh, there is a treasure chest. Ooh. It contains 600 copper, 110 silver pieces, and two potions of healing. So wait, I guess I'm going to divvy this up. So each of us get 200 copper, 30 to each of us, and I offer 20 to Sildar. Sildar takes silver. He's like, thank you. And two potions of healing. Can I have one, guys? Just because I'm a little squishy. You and Bartholomew can take them. I don't need them. Okay. So okay. I have one and I give one to Bartholomew. Thanks. Jade, you find a jade statuette of a frog with tiny little golden orbs for eyes. Ooh. Can I have this? Go for it. The frog statue is a small enough is small enough to fit in a pocket or pouch. Ooh, lovely. Well, I have a I have a, um, a bag with me. I'm gonna give one of my potions of healing to Sildar. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's uh, very kind of you. Uh, drinks the potion. Anything else we need, guys? No, I think we're good. You guys go ahead and exit the cave, and you take Sildar with you. As we're as we're leaving, I guess I'm gonna say to them, "Hey guys, I guess I could come back with a with the wagon and like just grab the stuff and we could sell it." If you want. Yeah. That tickles and your fancy. As the sun begins to set, as you guys are heading your way back to Fandolin, this is where we're gonna go to call tonight's episode. Thank you.